Essential Depot soap kit recipe. Um, <coughs> I, I created the recipe that's inside the kit uh, for Essential Depot and I worked really hard to make sure that you would get a hard, long lasting, very bubbly, very creamy bar of soap made with the very best. Of course that was easy because it's made with Essential Depot components. But in any case, um, uh, in here is everything you need to make a loaf of soap except for a water. You do have to supply your own water and of course a few tools. Um, this has the components though. Uh, so we're going to first talk about a few things that you need. Um, we're going to need for safety, we're going to need gloves. Uh, if you have breathing issues like uh, asthma or any problems with breathing or if you'd like to be cautious with the fumes, uh, a nice mask. I like this one because it has a little ventilator on it. Um, it has been used a bit and has, is not uh, real brand new because <laughs> we utilize them here. A pair of safety goggles. You can go and get a cheap pair for a couple of bucks or even a dollar at the Dollar Tree, but these are some really nice glasses ones. They don't have the elastic band around your head and it's a little bit more pleasant, uh, but you can upgrade to that <laughs> later. Uh, so that's what we need for safety. Um, other than it's really nice and I highly recommend that you have some vinegar sitting at your sink. Uh, some people will say that vinegar doesn't work. Uh, but me, I have found that vinegar works very well for me. Um, if I ever get any lye water on me, I just flush it with cold water and then pour vinegar on it and it, I never have any issues. I do have a little poison ivy at the moment. Maybe some vinegar would be good for that too. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, on another note, um, we're going to need a few tools. Uh, we're going to need a crock pot. This is a four quart crock pot. And how to tell if it's a quart crock pot, get you a four quart crock pot to get you, if it don't say on the packaging and you already have it, you can get a, crop, a quart jar and fill it up four times with water and pour it in there. If you get all the water in, you've got a four quart crock pot. All right. Um, we need a stainless steel spoon, use no aluminum. A wooden spoon is really nice to have. A, this is a cake icing spatula. It's not a requirement, but it really works great to, cl to clean the edges and keep the soap down in there uh, so that you don't get crusty places at the top. A big spatula and a little spatula. Um, and then I like to have uh, some little small glass or porcelain dishes that you normally would use in the kitchen, not decorative. Um, then you're going to need a stick blender. All right. And um, uh, I really love these uh, just old school thermometers that you can get at Walmart. Um, they're just a candy thermometer. And then I like these little bitty whisks um, as well. I find those very handy. Um, we're going to need a digital scale, uh, one that does ounces. Um, we're going to need a small pot of water for the stove and also possibly something to sit in there to balance the items that we're going to put in there. So I've got some heavy weight uh, glasses that would tolerate the heat. Um, when we get to that portion, you can look and judge for yourself what you have that might work. Um, a knife to open up our box with. Um, we're going to need a whisk. This is sort of a heavy duty whisk. You don't have to have one this fancy. And a dish to set it on to carry it to the sink so we don't drop lye water on the floor. Uh, and also to keep the lye water off the counter as best you can. And then a drinking pitcher. This is a half a gallon drinking pitcher. pitcher. Uh, you can get these from uh, Walmart and sometimes the Dollar General stores. You just want to make sure that you get a nice heavy plastic. The thin plastic ones, uh, the lye water can get so hot that it'll sort of melt them a little bit and they can bulge. So you want a really strong one you, and you want, one that, you want it to be tall and skinny with a wide opening. The same, you know, I mean it's a little skinnier at the bottom than it is at the top, but you don't want it the other way around. And uh, of course keep your lid uh, for whenever you're going to uh, put your lye water in the refrigerator at any point to cool it down for a later use. Um, that's really handy. You, of course, you might want to mark your jar, uh, your container with uh, the skull and bones or uh, 
put something on it that makes everybody in the family not know to not drink it or just don't do that if there's too many members of the family that that could become a problem such as small children but it is nice to have the lid for storage um, all right so um, now we're going to we've we've looked at what we need and I hope I've gathered everything if not we'll add something later and we, I might have put a few things in here that you might not have to have. You know, you could scale down and do the basics for the first time you're making soap. But I've laid out everything I think I might need. So now we're going to open up our Essential Depot kit and see what's in the box. All right. All right, everybody. Um, now we're going to look and see what's in the box. Um, remember that if you've got the full kit, you have a soap mold in here, so be careful with your knife as you're opening your box. And uh, inside the box, uh, you'll have a bag, and just grab, and everything comes out. If you don't have one of the Essential Depot wire baskets, if you didn't purchase one of those separately or already have one, save your box. And what we'll do is, is we'll just cut the flaps off like this. Uh, and then we'll use the box for stability of the mold. Uh, the mold is extremely hard wearing and thicker than any mold on the market, in my opinion, that I have come in contact with. Very stable, but it is nice uh, to have the stability of the box with hot process soap. Uh, because the hot process soap, uh, if we get it just a little bit too thick, sometimes it'll bulge slightly in the middle, but it's really rare. It just happens every once in a while. But if you just go ahead, cut the flaps off, and slip your mold down in the box like this, then you have sort of a, stabi a stability frame. Uh, but now they do sell a stability stackable frame, and I usually cut it down about an inch uh, below the flap line so that the box is out of the way. Um, but that's just um, one of the first ideas they came up with before they uh, got the stability frames uh, developed and, and got those available on the website. So uh, I will not be using the box. I'm going to set it over here out of my way. All right, so we have this wonderful uh, Essential Depot mold. These come in two colors. Sometimes you'll get the non-pigmented mold and sometimes you'll get the pigmented mold. Uh, very thick, very durable uh, uh, silicone mold that will, be, will last you forever and your relatives will fight over at your wake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now inside this component here, we also, this is our base oils, along with the castor oil and the steric. And this is one of the things that we're going to need the hot water for. Um, but these items go in the crock pot. We have our lye, which will get mixed with the water. And then we have our super fats. Uh, our super fats is what makes our bar moist and uh, moisturizing and creamy and great for the skin. And we will put those in at the end. This does not go into the crock pot at the beginning. Uh, we have our essential oil blend, which is a secret recipe I came up with just for y'all guys. And we have our colorant. And this is Alkanet Root, wonderful colorant for hot process soap. Uh, although you can choose not to use it or use another colorant that you might have on hand. Just make sure that it's skin safe colorant and meant for use in cosmetic products. Alright, so that is what is in the box. Now we'll start working on getting these items in the crock pot. Okay, um, I've got some water boiling, but the first thing we're going to do is open up our large container of base oils. And we're going to put those in our crock pot. I find that during the summer, they stay mostly melted, um, and so you normally don't have to heat them for this. There is a safety seal, excuse me, and uh, that keeps them from getting away inside the packaging, 
it's good to take as much of that off as you can so that you can get in there and clean well um, with your spatula. So first you pour them in and tap as much as you can and then you can usually scrape. Now sometimes during the, during the winter, especially if you've just gotten the packaging and it's been very cold in transit, sometimes uh, there'll be more solidness to the, to the oils. Um, uh, but during the summer I find that um, it's, uh, they're more liquid and you don't have to work as hard to get them out of the container. Uh, you do want to scrape every little drop you can out uh, because that is a part of the recipe. Alright, so now we will put the lid on the crock pot and we will put it on low so that these oils will begin to heat. Okay, everybody. Now, I've already moved the outside plastic from our two smaller bottles. One is our super fats and one is our castor oil. Now, I'm gonna turn off the eye and I'm gonna move the water off the stove uh, eye or the heating source. And um, then I'm going to set the two bottles in the pan you don't want the water to come up higher than halfway if you have a bigger pot and you're worried about the bottles tipping over uh, just put something in there so that that would make them stationary we have some directions heat water on stove to 180 degrees take pan off the stove place bottle in water upright do not let bottle cap go under the water line this will melt the steric acid that is in this one and allow for you to get out the uh, of container you may have to repeat the process to get all of the steric uh, the steric out of the container so that little note come there but it also works good for this one as well uh, so now we'll give that just a little time to melt. The steric acid has been pre-melted in the container, so that makes it melt easier now uh, and come out easier now. So we'll give that some time uh, just sitting there and letting it melt. Okay, now um, as I said, you can wear your face mask. Um, I don't have any issues with that, so, and I'm not accustomed to using them personally myself. Uh, you need to have your gloves on. I really prefer the long gloves that you purchase that are not one-time use gloves because they protect your arms better, but I did not have any of those available to me today, uh, so I'm using these today. Uh, we are going to put in here uh, 13 ounces of water. And I went over just a couple of points, uh, and that's just fine. Uh, you don't, and you do want to use. Um, uh, we prefer that you use distilled water. Uh, then you are going to take your uh, pre-packaged lye that is already uh, packaged and ready for you to use, and um, you will sprinkle some and stir. Sprinkle and stir. Sprinkle and stir. Sprinkle and stir. Sprinkle and stir. And and see that with the water being way down here and all this space between it, you don't get lye water popping out on you. You can whisk quite briskly. I'm gonna move my scale out. Of there. My scale is very flat. It's just like a countertop, but some scales are wiggledy woggledy. So make sure you sit it on the counter. And you can hold it firmly. 
I love these handles. Your gloves will not get stuck in the handle. And you want to not breathe any fumes that's rising. And this is when that happens. It's just that first little bit. Now, you want to then check out your container for lye crystals that might be stuck on the side of the container. And I'll just tip a little bit if I see any and let the water carry them into the rest of the water. A lye crystal will not dissolve once uh, it is uh, in the oil. So we must dissolve it now in the water. All right, now I'm, uh, I am going to take the super fats and I'm going to also remove the safety seal. And uh, I just let them sit in the hot oils and melt gently, uh, slowly. Uh, we don't want to get our oils over 180. Uh, to keep their uh, skin health benefits. Um, and there we go. That's what the little whisk was for. I mean, the little spatula was for. You see how good that works? Um, then, if you would like, you can then add your color it now. And um, please be careful with sharp objects. Um, this has a really nice uh, little seal. Uh, as you can see, this stuff escapes a little bit sometimes, and it gets on things, so it's good to keep it. They, they, they seal it up really nice. And uh, I'm going to put um, a half a teaspoon in here. A half a teaspoon just gives a nice blue color that's not too dark. And I'm just going to uh, completely dissolve the liquid into, now you could use a small fork, but this is what the small whisk was for. And so now we have our colorant uh, dissolved into our oils. And uh, we'll reseal this and then place it back in here. And then we will reseal that. <laughs> All right, so that took care of that. So now those are ready, and I'm going to just set them right next to the crock pot so that they will stay melted and warm. All right. Okay, now this is our castor oil and our steric. Uh, I'm using my little spatula to prevent the big lump from coming out. Uh, there's still a little bit of a lump and of the steric acid and so what I'm doing is is I'm now going to repeat the process as it said on the directions and uh, reheat it. I'm going to reapply the lid and put it back in the water uh, uh, and, and melt this again. Okay now we have our safety glasses on and our uh, uh, gloves <clears throat> um, and now we're going to add our lye water with the stick blender in the off position and then start blending lightly. Try to get as much as you can of the lye water into your soap mixture. Remember, if you have holes in your stick blender or grooves, that must stay under the oil line. Never let it rise to the top or it will spray uh, lye water and oils on you. blender has a little button you push and uh, then it just dis it'll disengage and so I just drop it right into the lock container and I can take that directly to the sink and wash it. All right now what we have here is we have a completely blended creamy 
um, soap or custard appearance and we've blended thorough but we've just blended it till it became a good custard appearance and there's no oil swirls on the top of the soap okay now we're putting the crock pot on low we've got our super fats back here I always worry a little bit of lye water might jump out of the crock pot so I think it's better to have things pushed away and then clean up with a wet rag with your gloves on <clears throat> We've got our two spoons, our crock pot, our super fats, and we're just gonna let this cook for on low for about an hour, and I'll bring you back for the different stages and show you what to do. Okay, <clears throat> now we have what I call gel. It's a firmness, and sometimes it can be much firmer than that. Uh, we're gonna do what we call the tic-tac-toe method. So you're gonna create a tic-tac-toe, and then dig out the middle, and that lets the soap be able to breathe um, uh, through the lines that you made uh, so that you don't have an issue um, whenever it starts turning from gel to molten soap, you might say, or bubbly soap. Uh, sometimes a, a, a firm gel top will be on here and it will rise. So if you cut holes in it and dig out the center, I find that you don't have to worry about watching for that. And many times it doesn't do it, but it is more apt to happen in a very circular crock pot. So, so it's particularly important to do it with a four quart, four quart or three quart uh, crock pot that's tall and skinny like this. All right, we're going to put our lid back on. We're going to cook this for about an hour, uh, as I said, and I will take you through the steps, and then we will cook it on uh, past that, but the first hour is where we have to do a little bit more to it. Okay, and as you can see along the edges, we have hot, bubbly, molten, as I call it, soap. And here in the center, we have very hard gel. And so once the bubbles, the bubbly soap starts working up, I like to give it a stir and just blend it together a little bit. And I'll often take a cake icing scraper that I showed you and clean the edges and so that uh, we don't have a crusty soap uh, up top that gets all cool and then makes white flicks in your soap or white pieces. There we go. And then I like to clean the spoon as well. And you can use a plastic spatula if you want to do a better job. There we go. And now I will put the lid back on it and we're gonna to continue to let it cook. All right, guys. Now we have gotten to the molten soap throughout. And see that Vaseline looking stage? That's actually lit water that's evaporated off through the soap. And uh, that is the first stages of what we call the Vaseline stage. And uh, same thing, clean your edges. All right. You really dig around the bottom. Make sure you don't get any soap that sticks around in one spot. It'll get dried out and get all crispy on you. So you see how we got some white fluff and we've got some Vaseline-y shiny spots? We're gonna let this cook for just a little bit more. And we do give you the time of about two hours, but it's more about your crock pot. Some crock pots cook hotter than others, and so therefore the soap gets done faster, and some crock pots cook very, very slow on low. So what you do is you're watching for when certain things happen. So we, we got gel. Then we got the molten soap coming up. Well, when we got gel, we did the tic-tac-toe. Then we started getting the molten soap coming up. Now we've completely turned into molten fluffy soap. 
um, and we just want it to be just a touch more Vaseline than what it is right now uh, and then it's going to be done so I'm going to bring you back okay uh, now we've gotten to a more glassy Vaseline stage and now we're going to add our super fats with colorant Bridget would you uh, and um, we're going to add our super fats this has vitamin E, cocoa butter, shea butter, all kinds of wonderful um, super fats that are great for the skin. And we're gonna add that in and give it a nice stir. And as we stir it, it's gonna slowly turn blue, which is so fun. But alkanet root um, reacts to heat and turns a pretty shade of blue and uh, so now we've mixed those in and now what we're going to do is we're going to let this cool and how we're going to do that is uh, by uh, taking and putting the lid slightly ajar the crock pot is off and now we're going to let it cool down to 160 uh, using our candy thermometer Okay, everybody, I did end up with some crusties up here because I got busy here working in my store and I didn't keep it clean enough and I'm trying not to disturb those and knock them down into the soap. You can pick them out if they fall in there. <laughs> Just be cautious. All right, so now I'm, I'm gonna get this special secret blend. It, there is a list of what is in there, but not how much of each one. And, uh, and so it's hard to make it smell just like it because it's a secret recipe. And so now we're gonna pour our essential oils in. We've cooled the soap to 160. Uh, you take your, I think I showed you, but if I didn't, you take and you swirl your, uh, oh, and you take it out and don't leave it in there by accident. You swirl your candy thermometer in the soap and then watch it. Swirl it some more and then watch it. Don't just stick it and leave it because it'll lie to you and I don't know why. Uh, but it ha uh, you have to swirl it around. But those things are so awesome. I love them when it comes to uh, getting the right temperature. Uh, but you just have to swirl it so it don't lie. And, and I think a few little white specks in the soap makes it look rustic and natural. And oh, this soap will perk you up. I mean, you will get so perked up around the smell of this soap when you put those essential oils in there. I mean, it, it, those essential oils work so beautifully for aromatherapy, for lifting the spirits and making you feel good. Um, it's just wonderful. So whenever I'm making this soap, everybody in the room that gets to smell the essential oils when they're hot coming out of the soap, um, they get to feeling so good. All right, so now we've blended it until it goes back to an opaque color. If you still have shiny spots in there, then um, you need to keep stirring. And you will work your thumb. You see I'm digging out down at the bottom and pulling through. All right, so now it's all blended. And now there is a particularly large little white spot that fell off, so it was my fault, but it happens regularly. Uh, so now we're going to put the soap in the mold. And I'm just dolloping it in there. It is still warm to the touch, but it's not too terribly bad this point it's under 160 because it became 160 degrees and then you put in your essential oils and then that reduced the temperature slightly I'm going to pull this forward and going to do a few things to the mold. We're going to tap, 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 tap. 
get all the air out that we can. And then we're going to take a spoon and we're going to do a little swirl. And we're just going to go under and we're making circles, okay? We're making circles under the soap line. And that pulls fresh, hot, moldy, swirled soap to the top and gives you a pretty top. And um, and now commonly when you're swirling this way, um, there's another little speck, um, it'll get higher on that side than this side. So if you just lightly wiggle it, and then if you don't want it mounted in the middle, you can just tap it once and it becomes more flat. And, um, and then if you, you can even do that and uh, then do a pretty little swirl again. But you have to watch about, what, if you get it too cool, you're very slow working with the molding and it gets too cool, once you get it somewhere, you just leave it alone. Because it is not, it, once it starts getting too cool, you cannot make it pretty anymore. So there we go. So now we've got a nice uh, lifted top. So now we are going to leave this alone for 10 to 12 hours and then we'll cut this tomorrow. But let me see if I can get that in there. Isn't that pretty? All right, see you tomorrow guys. Okay, everybody, we have our perfect loaf of soap that we made from the Essential Depot Floral Spirit Lifter Kit. And now I'm going to take the mold out of my basket and get that out of the way. These baskets are awesome. You can stack the soaps, up. like if you do several loaves at one time, you can stack them up. Just a little push. And there she is all pretty we're just gonna I'm just gonna take off a few of the little places that that's poking up you don't have to do that if you don't want to but it's because I flattened it and then I re swirled the top so it was standing up so you could see both alrighty now we're gonna get our essential depot cutter which is an excellent source of the most awesome way to cut your soap perfectly every time and there we go. And there we have it. Perfect bars of soap. The Essential Depot Soap Kit. Everything you need, but a few tools and a little bit of water. You're getting 11 bars of soap. You can uh, cut these by hand with a knife and make the bars bigger. But there you go. 11 bars of perfect soap. and they smell beautiful. What I really love about the smell of this soap is it has sort of an exotic floral, so men like it just as well as women, uh, which is, I never expected when I created the recipe blend for the smell. Plus, of course, the smell of this soap is awesome when it comes to lifting the spirits. Mm, and it's just wonderful. The color is just right. It's not too dark. Uh, just makes a beautiful color of soap that doesn't leave a dark uh, foam running down the sides of your shower. Um, and uh, I thank you so much. If you might go to KimberlyMagnet.com, www.K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-M-C-N-U-T-T.com, and click on my link uh, to purchase uh, this soap making kit. Uh, that would really uh, be nice and help me out, and it doesn't cost you anything. And, uh, and that is the beauty of the whole thing. <laughs> I 
I think. And uh, you do have a couple of scraps if you should so choose to purchase a soap uh, cutter, but it's very limited scraps, uh, so very little waste with the, uh, with the soap cutter. All right, y'all have an awesome day, and thank you for purchasing the Essential Depot Floral Spirit Lifter created by me, Kimberly McNutt of Essential Soap.